to April the 26th of 2019. This is the 33rd anniversary of Chernobyl. Welcome. I'm Dana Durford, the nuclear proctologist.org. So we're not really going to be taking phone calls today unless uh, you got new information on Chernobyl. We're just going to get through all the stuff we got put together. This is the story today tells the story of Chernobyl. And by the way, I noticed a comment. Elaine is saying I'm missing a letter in the emails below. So the proper emails are right here, but I'll go in and rectify that after the stream. I can't do it during the live stream or the pre unfortunately. So it has to wait till after the stream. For Skype, Dana Durnford at live.com. You can phone in if you got new information on Chernobyl, 604-223-0763. You can text me. Dana Durnford at hotmail.com contact me or if you got issues with Skype send me your Skype and I'll send you an invite Skype machine is up and running now the picture you're looking at behind me is allegedly the what they call the elephant foot at Chernobyl and such a beautiful picture but yet they can't get a picture in Fukushima because in reality if you had a camera and done that you would never get the picture but it goes much further. It's a deception. Here's another part of that deception. If somebody was, this is allegedly somebody up by the Chernobyl core meltdown in a paper suit taking a picture. You got any idea how ludicrous that's, that he done that to trick people about Chernobyl, to manipulate the conversation about Chernobyl, to uh, disarm you? to confuse you. That's the nuclear industry. Every facet of nuclear has those attributes, every facet of it. Three million children require treatments because of Chernobyl. Now, if you're treated for radiation illness, that's permanent. That's not like you go get a band-aid or you get stitches and you're okay. That's permanent. That was Kofi Anna in 2000. Now, how many were not treated? How many couldn't afford medical? How many grew up with all kinds of other illnesses and diseases? Like cancers, most people, or almost all people, if you don't, if you never met my uh, material, are under the assumption that the only thing you have to worry about is cancer. It shows you how dangerous nuclear actually is to people in it generation after generation of their children getting the educations for free and then getting positions of authority and then becoming entitled and then becoming abusive and belligerent and arrogant and pompous and hubris and to the point now where our whole planet is jeopardized. I got a compelling story for everybody today. I notice again, no subscribers in the last number of years maybe 100 subscribers in the last couple of years. So hard to raise the money to do the research or to put together the operation. It doesn't even pay the bills. We got another bill at the end of the month for 700. And so any money we raised has to go towards that to keep the whole operation from just flip flopping and destroying itself. Every day, it's just pure desperation trying to keep it's not right. How do I get work done when I'm struggling constantly? How do I move forward if I got to struggle constantly? And where I'm censored to the point where I can't even pick up any subscribers and where I have a perfect platform, you can come in on Skype, you can come in on cell phones, you can read your emails, or just the information itself. How does that... They're so terrified of somebody speaking the truth. They're so horrified. They're not really dead either. They're, they're, they're ashamed of what they're doing, and so they have to stop people. Not that anybody's trying, but they have to stop anybody that might try or looks like they're trying. 
And then you have to try to seed that conversation with nothing but conjectures and opinions from clowns. Three million children is just a tiny fraction of the illnesses and the diseases that haven't been diagnosed. Institute indexed the South paid dearly for the nuclear innocence a failed renaissance. I got some stories to cover. In the decade after the meltdown at the Pennsylvania, that's another nuclear accident in the United States, Three Mile Island nuclear power plant took place 40 years ago. We covered that a few weeks back. Number of nuclear plant orders that the U.S. utilities canceled skyrocketed. There was over 100 nuclear power plants were canceled after Three Mile Island. So Chernobyl, that's the control room in Chernobyl. And the control room is one of those lights don't work, you can have a meltdown. One of those buttons malfunction, you can have a meltdown. The doctors treated 600 helicopter pilots, they all died. And so Chernobyl compared to Fukushima, Chernobyl compared to Fukushima. The fact that uh, the reactor in Japan is a uh, hundred times more powerful than the one in Chernobyl and... So the ones in Japan are a hundred times more powerful than the ones in Chernobyl, but the ones in Chernobyl, the effects and the long-standing illnesses and diseases are astronomical. These are what they called liquidators. And that's such an absurd name because radiation liquefies your organs and kills you in this environment. They're wearing lead vests and they made them up themselves mostly. They're on the roof throwing uh, graphite, which is, was in the reactor core, over the side of the building. So they, go, they work for 15 seconds, then they go home and die. And you can never have a life after. That's the story of the liquidators on the roof of the reactors in particular. I'm going to play another clip. We're going to start picking up speed here. We've got an amazing story to tell you about Chernobyl. For sure, definitively. It's an amazing story I have here for everybody. It's not complicated. Everybody can catch on. So the video coming up is going to start off with Harvard University after Fukushima talking about all the helicopter pilots died. That's not something UNSCLEAR or IRPA or UN or the IAEA or the NRC, the nuclear regulators, all these agencies with nuclear are going to tell you about. Here's Harvard talking about it. And you know well at Chernobyl, the helicopter pilots that came in and that deposited the heavy materials to try to put down that fire, which was a very different kind of event than what we're looking at now, but still, there were helicopters and the pilots all died from radiation exposure. Um, so there was a documentary. No, it was heroism. I'll turn it up. During this operation, 600 pilots are fatally contaminated with radiation. All of them will die. So 600 pilots fatally contaminated with radiation. But their efforts only by a few days. Although it has been covered over, the fire still isn't out. 600 helicopter pilots. And the helicopter pilots also went and flowed and dropped regions directly in the area to try to knock down the radiation. So the homeless, they jacked people off the street, actually. They went into these communities with buses and just took people and brought them over to Chernobyl in the background. It's insidious, by the way. These are abandoned communities, but this is insidious. They would even build a community by a nuclear power plant. Meltdown by Chernobyl. This was the cover-up. came out uh, March the 22nd. A journalist reconstruct now a journalist is another word for mass murder enabler. 
the world's worst nuclear disaster. So they're right away setting the stage. Just put a tough on the podcast. A journalist reconstructs the world's worst disaster. But as I played for you earlier, Chernobyl was one one hundred the size. The fact that uh, the reactor in Japan is a uh, hundred times more powerful than the one in Chernobyl. And but yet here they are recently, just a few weeks back, out there trying to manipulate everybody. Dozens died in the immediate aftermath. <clears throat> like it's, that was uh, midnight to Chernobyl, going around doing interviews before the anniversary, every year before the Chernobyl anniversary and Fukushima anniversaries, you'll see a parade of actual real life demons. Real goblins. Everybody will try to manipulate you if you're going to any of the main medias. This is truly the only spot we know where that's not going to happen. We're not going to mess around. We're not going to play any games. We're not going to pretend. We're not going to misrepresent. Even though that could happen and has happened in the past, and we, when we catch it, we'll rectify it. It's not something that's ongoing, but when you cover incredible volumes of information that I covers here, that's bound to happen. None of them are really important mistakes, but right here we hate with a passion making any mistakes because it's used to leverage and to attack me. The book is titled Midnight to Chernobyl, the untold story of the world's greatest nuclear disaster. You just have to give me one minute. My lights went down, but I have backed up, so they're up and running again. <clears throat> These people would have died shortly after. They're on the roof with the reactor core landed, parts of it. And so midnight to Chernobyl should be in jail. The police should be out arresting anybody that does stuff like that. These are abandoned areas around Chernobyl. In the background, that's the gallows laugh, by the way. They put these, that was put on a set of rails, that big building back there, and then it was rolled over the previous cover that they put there. Think of a tarp, basically. There's no way to seal it because you're getting lethal doses up close to it. And then it breaks down shortly after. This was meant to pacify you, to manipulate you, to deceive you, to, to trick you. Now, they had to raise a billion dollars just to put that cover there. A billion. This is actually so complicated. But then you see, like, South Carolina has two failed nuclear power plants recently where they're not even built, and they had blown $9 billion on it, but they couldn't find a billion dollars. It took them decades to find a billion dollars to put on a nuclear meltdown because everybody pretended it wasn't happening. And then everybody was manipulated and deceived and tricked by this bizarre, bizarre friggin' thing called media. And then you got someone like me who can't even get 100 subscribers over several years. I just stay in the one spot for months at a time. I don't get five or six. It'll go back five or six. I'll get five or six subscribers. It'll go back five or six. And I'll go on for months. <clears throat> If I was crazy, I'd be getting tens of thousands a year or a month or a week. But I was trying to have a conversation about nuclear. This is how, how dangerous the nuclear industry, they're actually controlling YouTube. They're actually controlling my site. And they're getting paid, and they're happy to have that job that they censor me and control me. The people that are doing that, they're proud of themselves. They revel in what they're doing. I have you to help me, and if you don't help me, 
then I go away, yeah? That's the game that they're playing. It's not a game for me or you, but it's a game for them. Just keep cutting me off until I go away. Keep cutting me off till I can't exist. Keep, keep it to the point where I have to struggle regardless. Now, everybody else would have ran away a long time ago in my position. Everybody else would have gave up a long time ago, very long time ago. I get what's going on, and I'm doing everything I can to keep the whole operation afloat. I'm not perfect. I don't know if anybody is. So at the top of the page, a Norwegian's writer elegy on Chernobyl, the world's worst nuclear disaster. So it comes like this comes from me at you all the time, every day. Chernobyl, the world, the exact same sentences over and over and over, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade. Chernobyl, the world's worst nuclear disaster. That's them building another sarcophagus to roll over the old sarcophagus. A billion dollars. A billion dollars. And yet, they had to struggle, allegedly, for several decades to raise that much. Because there's an agenda to release this into the environment. There's an agenda to cover it up. And everybody in the media knows that agenda. Everybody in the media participates willingly in that agenda. Everybody, in, everybody that you call a journalist has sold their soul to the nuclear industry or worse, if there is worse. There's enough people out there to help me, and I don't really ask for extraordinary help. I'm not like these people. <clears throat> when I ask for help, I'm being pacific, and I'm pleading. I can't do it myself. I can come up with as many plans as I want. Very few of them will get the help and be able to implement it. We like to move in the studio. I doubt highly I'll raise anywhere near the money I need. It's so heartbreaking for me that I work so hard every day. I have no choice because if I don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. How the hell do I walk away? Why would I? How could I? The biggest heartache I got is I can't do the, the very basics that I need to do. So they're making their own vests. They were jacked off the street or out of the military. At gunpoint, by the way, on the streets, on buses. The people in the helicopters all died. Uh, just a quick story. Taiwan president and the ex-premier uh, to attend an anti-nuclear march, date chosen is to mark the Chernobyl anniversary. So right, the two, the, the, the president right now and the ex-premier are both going to march in an anti-nuclear march in Taiwan. And they picked Chernobyl this year instead of for the last eight years they have chosen, or seven years they have chosen, on, or six years they have chosen March 11th because of Fukushima. And Fukushima had a massive, and still does, impact on Taiwan. And they're actually going to march will attend a nuclear march. The organizers invited the politicians, government leaders to attend the event. And both the president and premier were both running to become the ruling Democratic Progressive Party's presidential candidates. Both of them have accepted the invitation. Party leadership decided last week to encourage all its leaders and members to take part in the marches. Think about that. The party leadership decided last week to encourage its leaders and members to take part in the anti-nuclear march. They're sick of the lies. Now, Taiwan University, nuclear universities, have 2,200 students. And what they done? They spammed the internet after Fukushima. That was a nuclear student's job. And so nuclear universities has access to incredible censorship technology and can create it because they have these students that are brainwashed and manipulated and emotionless, raised by emotionless parents. And they're, they're used to bludgeon someone like me. They're used to vilify and demonize me. There is no one like 
that does what I do. There is no one comes close to doing what I do. Nobody has ever done anything rem remotely close to what I've done in the nuclear world. In fact, it's almost safe to say I surpass all of them combined with the work that I've done and the material I've produced. Nobody has even will ever and have ever come close to the amount of material I produce. I'm begging you to help me. I'm begging you. I don't know who to turn to. I thought I was supposed to turn to you. And I have to struggle. That's unacceptable. You can donate in the links at the bottom of the page. I'm not going to go away, but it's not right that I, someone like me should have to struggle. It's unacceptable. It's unimaginable this day and age. And this week I've produced so much material alone is staggering. Previous anti-nuclear events usually took place in March to mark the anniversary. And I haven't been healthy the whole time on top of that. I had to force myself to do everything. I've had to bust myself up to, to go on and do the whole coastline repeatedly. Vilified and attacked, demonized and smeared. And to the point where I can do some things now because I've worked so hard, I still gas out in zero time. It just doesn't seem right. It just seems like it's such a betrayal that people uh, would censor me, that people would attack me, that people would uh, vilify me. It's just so heartbreaking every night and every morning for me. I go to bed every night, sick to my guts. I wake up every morning the same way because I'm heartbroken that anybody would attack me and that people won't support me. The world will look back on this and hang their head in shame. When someone honest, funny showed up, they were the demon. They were treated as demons. These are graveyards of equipment because nuclear is so clean and green and so cheap to meter that it contaminated everything it touches. That contaminates the ground. That contaminates the air. The air there is radiated. There's some of your paper suits they use at Chernobyl. Health disaster for the liquidators. But the apologists will tell you that there was no damage. And uh, there's a documentary out there that tells the story of that picture you're looking at. These people all went out on the roof for 15 or 20 seconds. They were all getting ready to leave. And there was a banner there, and they had their picture taken. But does that, does that mean that everything is okay? Does that mean that they all had... They were all okay the next day and the next weeks and the next months. Most of them would have died shortly after. You really think they abandoned these helicopters for something to do? Do you know how much they cost? Got a couple of headlines, then we're going to get into a couple of stories that are so important. I um, imagine you've never heard these stories or these information coming up in a few minutes. And... Eye opener, under 3% of the children exposed to Chernobyl radiation in their womb, which were the prenatal, were diagnosed as healthy at age seven. So look how much carbon-free material it takes to build Chernobyl. Because that's a stupid question. That's a stupid statement, by the way. Belarus bemoans the drop in the birth rates after Chernobyl. So the birth rates fell by half in Belarus after Chernobyl. They abandoned these helicopters where all 600 of the pilots died. They died. Do you really think the helicopters could ever be safe? Chernobyl Corps, according to Miko Kaku, a famous academic and personality on TV, and Professor says the Chernobyl core is still melting into the earth. Chernobyl core is still melting into the earth. But yet um, the nuclear industry is after putting pictures of them taking pictures of a reactor core. This is a ludicrous picture. So is that one, by the way. It just colored it and put a green screen person in there because they're a university or academics and they have access to it. They're not wearing no safety gear, no equipment. There is no equipment to make it safe. They're trying to build a sarcophagus, and that is 
They threw a million people at this. A million. Non-stop because they were getting such high doses, their organs were melting. Pediatrician, homes full of the most grossly deformed children we have ever seen in the history of pediatrics all around Chernobyl. All around Chernobyl. These people would have died shortly after. You're getting lethal doses. You're right by a melted and exploded reactor core. Sheep farmers still stuck. Now, this was 2009, December 2009. Sheep farmers still stuck under a Chernobyl cloud. Now, this story talks about 9,000 farms in Britain and British Isles, Ireland, Scotland. Over 9,000 farms were stopped from selling food. What they done was they betrayed it. Everybody starts selling the food later. We're going to talk about that coming up here. But 9,000 farms in Chernobyl, from Chernobyl, 3,000 miles away. Like, if you don't stop and pause and really think about the implications of nuclear and get busy and deal with the industry, it's... Um, who should do it if you're not going to do it? Are you going to wait for the next generation to do it? Are you going to hope? Are you going to hope somebody shows up and does it? When you're in a position, all you got to do is is start speaking out. Like the industry can't handle anybody saying the word no, nuclear. That they'll lose their mind. They'll attack you with so much venom. You'll be wondering, well, I just all I said was no. What? They're going crazy. I guess my biggest problem is I want to do something good. And I can't do it. That's a problem, right? If I was greedy and self-centered, there'd be no problem to do anything. I'm trying to do something. There's nothing but endless work for me. It means I'm going to get attacked relentlessly, constantly. It means I'm going to be just stalked and harassed and censored and vilified and demonized for the rest of my life. That's fine. It is what it is. I'm not afraid of these people. Therefore, shouldn't I be, shouldn't I be elevated to a position to carry it out? Everybody else is too terrified to, to put themselves through it, incapable, don't have the will. My will is not demonstrated after six years, then there's nothing I can do could ever convince you, I'm sure. You gotta understand I'm not I'm asking you because it has to be done. Nobody wants this job, including me. Ever since radiation from Chernobyl It's a bit of a distraction. That's the external microphone or the microphone for the Skype machine that nobody so far, is willing to use. And at some point in the future, that's going to happen. Like, I got to make real decisions coming up in the next few weeks. Because I'm determined to get the studio. I'm determined to have these conversations. I'm determined. And when I'm determined, that means I'm going to go do it. And that means I'm going to suffer so much because I have to struggle. I just, I'm unable to wrap my mind around how evil it is to do the things that are being done to me. It's unconscionable what's being done to me. Ever since radiation from Chernobyl rained, rained down on the UK 23 years ago, this was 2009, remember, for the rest of the... the sales of sheep in the areas affected have been restricted, but frustrated farmers now claim to me to save... Frustrated farmers. The, the farmers were so indoctrinated and are so incompetent that they think somehow it's going to be safer in the near future that that it's okay to take the chance and poison everybody that's acceptable to pretend that it's not harmful even though they can't sell their meat which means it's harmful they think some magic alexa alexa is going to come by and, and solve all this 
because the industry has them brainwashed or they're part of the industry or they're just fucking stupid. Most likely the latter. And that testing should stop. Farmers, frustrated farmers, claim the meat is safe and that testing should stop. In other words, so they can just go ahead and poison everybody because they want to make a fucking dollar because the industry has made them incompetent and incapable of understanding the repercussions of selling it. They're still, after all those years, they're not able to comprehend why they can't sell their fucking meat because the universities insist that it's, it's oh, it'll be okay. You guys got to wait a while. Have you ever heard me do shit like that? Have you ever heard me walk that fucking line where, yeah, well, it'll be, it'll be okay, you know, uh, when the scientists say it'll be okay. When the scientists are not even notorious, unmitigated monsters, savages. May 1986, when an unseasonably intense downpour lashed down on Crumbie and fell. David Elwood, then a 30-year-old farmer, 20 years later, he's 50-year-old, still there. Like, that's the definition of an idiot, by the way. Of a National Trust tenant farm above the hamlet. Remember the week? Well, it was lambing time, he recalled. It was really, really wet. And then we got the message from the ministry. All the sheep farmers in the area were told there was to go be a fortnight long restriction, fortnight, which is just a short while, on the sale and movement of the sheep. That's a picture of them there, I think. Because of Chernobyl. Now, paper suits and, and paper masks can't filter radiation. It's ludicrous to even think it's going to help because the elements are so small. They're smaller than the air particles that are going through the mask you breathe. There's no way to stop the radiation. Not only that, if the air is full of radiation, it's just pulsing right through you and into the guy behind you. A week earlier, April 26th, 1986, reactor number four to Chernobyl was then the Soviet Socialist Republic of Ukraine exploded, sending a plume of radioactive particles equivalent to the toxicity to 400 Hiroshima bombs. Hiroshima bomb was maybe 10 pounds or something. The plumes were much worse than the Hiroshima bombs they're claiming there. But that's the story. And they're going to stick to it. 9,000 farms. More than seven kilometers into the atmosphere. And due east in the breeze. So they, they framed the conversation. They framed the narratives. They framed the numbers. And then they stay in that ring. And you don't understand that there's way more going on in this conversation. And in the days that followed, as a fire raged unchecked, inside the twisted white hot remains the reactor. The wind direction reversed and the plume now a kilometer tall. So it went from seven kilometers tall to a kilometer tall. Let me double check that. Yeah, seven kilometers up into the atmosphere meant it was seven kilometers tall. Not like it's, it's not like a balloon that floats up. And so now it's a kilometer tall heading towards the northwest Europe. No, it was now 20 kilometers tall. And it wasn't until it goes all the way from the ocean floor all the way to the upper and lower troposphere minimum, headed towards the northwest Europe. It wasn't until workers at a nuclear reactor in Finland detected abnormally high doses of radioactivity under clothing up to 100 times what they call normal background. There's no such thing as a normal background. They just keep adding to it, and then they call that the normal background that anyone outside the Soviet Union realized the true severity of the accident. So the true severity of the accident, there were flying helicopters to drop read what they call regions, which is a, a material used to bond with the radioactive fallout and, and knock it down out of the sky. On the 2nd of May, the plume finally passed over parts of the UK, and so did a column of cloud carrying heavy rain. The rain fell hardest, where it always falls hardest on the uplands. Now, everything runs downhill. It doesn't just land there, and that's the end of this equation, which is left at a disequation, by the way. As the droplets of water fell from the sky, you don't need rain to make it fall because it's a continuous plume. 
they carried with them radionuclides. And what, the, what they're suggesting in this story, by the way, is just a single plume. As if Fukushima went poop, and that was it. And then they followed the, the plume never stopped friggin' coming at it. Or this is why they got another sarcophagus over, for goodness sake. Wake up. As the droplets of water fell from the sky to carry with them radionuclides, in particular cesium-137, in particular. Let me bring up the other radioactive isotopes. What you're talking about, the cesium-137, the iodine-131, and the strontium-90 dispersed from Chernobyl, they're only tracers. That's all they are. They used them as tracers. They used them as tracers. And then the tracers, you know, all, I'm just going to show you a tiny fraction of what we're talking about. But strontium, which 90, which you talk about, all the other strontiums and their daughters are going to be there. The biggest byproduct of these stuff is curium. This acts like plutonium, which is named after the devil. All their daughters, all the iodine, not just the 131, but all the other daughters, the fission products. Everything comes out of a meltdown, by the way, is a fission product. The dirt that come, goes gets chewed up, that becomes a fission product. Everything becomes so highly agitatable radiated comes in proxis, proximity of any of this material when it falls down gets irradiated when plants are radiated pollinate pollination is radiated and the animals that eat it becomes irradiated is forever all the xenons all the kryptons all their daughters these are just a tiny fraction of the isotopes we're talking about and the reactors run on uranium plutonium not iodine and cesium Americium, all their daughters. Neptunium, all their daughters. All the cesiums, all their daughters had to be taken into consideration. In an effort to prevent the radionuclides entering the food chain once they settled on the upland soil, well, the air was radiated. The Ministry of Agricultural, Fisheries and Food, as it was known then, ordered immediate restriction on the movement and sale of sheep within the most affected area. The most affected area, not the all the affected area, but what they considered the most affected area, particularly North Wales, Southwest Scotland, Northern Ireland, the Lake District, where the landscape is predominantly suited to grazing sheep. And almost 9,000 farms and 4 million sheep. 9,000 9, farms, 4 million sheep. 3,000 miles away that even today are not safe to eat. And hence they ship it to other countries. The radiation, because they're insane. The industry is insane. The radiation, radiation came from 3,000 miles away and you couldn't see it or smell it or hear it or taste it or feel it or pick it up or throw rocks at it. It's not right. I have to struggle. It's just not right. For many farmers around here, it brought back memories of the wind-scale nuclear accident in 1957. Now, when wind-scale melted down, they went out with buses to the theaters and stole people from the theaters watching a movie. Worked all for weeks, and then there was a movie playing. They took their little bit of money, went out to watch the movie, and then they were kidnapped and brought into a nuclear meltdown. They didn't go to the universities and get the nuclear students. So right there, nuclear was not supposed to exist ever again. Right there, that's proof that they know better. Right there, that was proof that they are unworthy to be in society. Right there, that's proof that they're, they're just common criminals. If a thief does something, you convict them. If a criminal does something, convict them. If the nuclear industry does something, you need to convict them. They're no, they're no different than any other criminal. They're hiding behind ignorance, and that's not tenable. You have to help me push this out there. You have to help me succeed. You have to make sacrifices too. You're in a position of knowledge. You're learning. You're aware. You know the difference. My father, who was a sheep farmer at that time, up near Exdale, reassured me by saying he didn't have any problems with wind scale, but we didn't know anything about these sort of things back then. You got two houses. And you got 
an income in your safe, sell one of your houses and donate the money to me. If you got three vehicles, sell one of your vehicles, and donate the money to me. If you can donate money to me and you're not doing it and you're burning it on alcohol or junk or vacations, you need to stop and help me for a bit. You need to double down and help me. You need to go bat, go to bat so that everybody, including you and every insect and animal and floras and flanas on this planet has an opportunity to have a future. You need to persuade people to help me. You need to get active like I am. We need that studio. That's not maybe. The longer I wait, the harder it is. It's the right thing to do. We gathered up the equipment over six years. We need that. We need to get into a studio. I apologize for trying to do the moral and ethical thing. I apologize for trying to be the only person that I can find on the planet that is willing to be honest and understand that I need to exist because nobody else will. And in order to get resistance, we need to have somebody like me front and center with the ability to be front and center, with the ability to carry out the research, with the ability to stand tall before the villains and demons and goblins, which is everything that we see now. Every new nuclear university, every academic, every nuclear student is nothing but cowards. It's bizarre. But he spammed the internet with lies. So we can't even have a conversation so they can pretend to somebody that they're good people. It's the strangest, most bizarre, most threatening, most dangerous thing going on on our planet. Elmwood still lives under the clouded Chernobyl legacy today. Basco Farm, the 1,000 acre tenant farm he operates with his wife, he should be off doing something else. He shouldn't be trying to bring, like, well, we can't send a footer because it's full of radiation. When will it be safe? That's not, in an informed society, nobody would say those words. Nobody would stay there and keep the farm open in the hopes that someday they wouldn't have to test the radiation no more. <clears throat> Wales has 355 farms now left that are still under restrictions. The other farms, he decided, nah, go ahead. And all the farms in Northern Ireland, 2,000 of them, I'm sorry, in were de-restricted in 2000. They didn't have to monitor for radiation. This is ludicrous that they had the farms that long. It's ludicrous that they were still having sheep there. It's ludicrous. It's 100% unmitigated, unequivocally ludicrous to do that. They've done that to keep the law alive. They've done that to keep the nuclear industry because the minute you said, no, you can't have sheep there no more, then the world, why not? Well, you know, radiation doesn't go away, and it's bad. Well, how much? It turns out just a single fucking atom. Time for you to get mad. Time for you people to grow up. Time for you people to fucking make a stand. What are you doing sleepwalking it into this fucking nightmare? Why are you doing that? Why are you so... F you can get riled up about everything else, but you can't get riled up about something so moral, something so fucking ethical, as to stop this insidious fucking extermination machine. For every sheep that has to be separately penned and cleared for sale by the government inspectors, which is the most frightening statement ever, a farmer receives a buck thirty francs or whatever it is, pounds or the hell is it? I can't remember. In compensation. The same amount as nineteen eighty six. It's bloody ridiculous, said Monster who still grown sheep there in the most radiated place on the planet and who doesn't want any more restrictions because he can't be somebody that he thinks he is. All he is is a murderer. The stuff they let go and sell is not healthy. They walk up to the animal with a garter counter and make that decision. That's not how this fucking works. The meat is so radiated that you can only check with a couple of isotopes with the garter counter. It's ludicrous. I have to go through all this hassle. Hassle. I have to go through all this non-poisoning people every time I want to poison people. We get to eight, ten visits a year from the inspectors. They keep saying it's going to take one more year. Nothing seems to ever get 
de-restricted around here, said monster. These are monsters. These are actual real-life idiots. This is a statement. Elwood is, that's the statement of, a, of an actual fucking idiot. Well, when can I sell my radiated food? Self-centered, arrogant, pompous prick. Stupid prick. Dana swearing, yeah. You should try it. We call this the Chernobyl Monitor. And we take first, we first take six background readings to work out the average. Show 17 and 18 before returning to 17. In Japan, it's 100. And if a reading on a sheep is 13 and above the background reading, we, we classify it as a failure. Well, 11 Beckwells after Chernobyl, studies have shown cause le uh, lesions and heart problems for children. Permanent. Japan's got 100 Beckwells a kilogram in their food. They dropped it down from 500 that they raised it to after Fukushima from a pre-Fukushima number of 0 0.1 Beckwells a kilogram. The machine costs 3,000 pounds and it can detect levels of cesium which is just a tracer, like I showed you earlier. The only remaining radionuclides from Chernobyl to give concern to the FSA. The only remaining nuclides from Chernobyl. Think about that statement, how to frame in that conversation. Remember the isotopes I showed you earlier, curium, plutonium, uranium, americium, neptunium. Oh, and they last a lot longer in cesium. They're much more deadlier. They're hot particles. To keep the cesium, because that's the light they've been feeding you in every study, too. But in the atmosphere and the body tissue of the animals. But in the atmosphere, the atmosphere. And because the whole land is so radiated, it's emitting isotopes all the time. What exactly is safe? The official maximum limit of cesium and meat, according to nut jobs, weirdos, freaks, because they created this limit after Fukushima. It's a thousand beckles. The limit echoes the internationally recognized standard established in the immediate, immediate aftermath of Chernobyl. The immediate, and then that's still, that's insane. So they had, there was no safe limit. They had an accident, then they call it safe. That's not how the, you, it's just shocking. It's horrifying what you're looking at. It's terrifying what we're talking about. For extra precautions, the FSA worked to a 600 Beckwells. So they, they said, oh, well, 1,000 is acceptable. We're going to go to 600. But it was made up after a fucking accident. 20 years later, you're still sitting on that. You're talking about a half-life of 30 years for cesium, cesium, which is how the UK pronounces it. So the point will soon be reached where the radioactive dose in the soil of the affected uplands, where everything runs downhill to your coastline and in your tidal pools, will be the half the level immediately after Chernobyl. What it does demonstrate to us is how insidious and insane and vicious and crazy the industry actually truly is and how stupid fucking farmers are. The reason why certain uplands remain affected is largely due to their soil type. So they're just going to make it up as they go along. Unlike clay soils, which can retain radionuclides permanently, no, the soil becomes radiated. It's not like it's just got isotopes in it. The soil itself becomes radiated because the isotopes are pulsing every second. Everything becomes radiated. The, fo the foliage, the trees, the leaves, the branches, everything in proximity of the radiation becomes radiated, and that can radiate everything on top of that. The peaty soil found on the slopes of many uplands, fells, and mountains allowed radionuclides to transfer to the grass and hence into the grazing sheep. Once ingested into the animal, to the so-called biological half rate of cesium-137 is about 10 days. Now they're claiming cesium is only going to stay in the animals for 10 days. Meaning it's excreted from the body relatively fast. But that's not true. That's not even close to being true. That's meant to make you fucking stupid. That's meant to make the farmers go, oh, I'll be okay in 10 days. Then I can sell it, yeah? Well, how do I make money if I can't sell me sheep? When can I sell it? That's all he say over and over and over and over. 
Instead of saying, why the fuck am I selling this? Why are you doing that? No, no, no. They're... Because your universities have went out there and brainwashed them. And the people from your universities went and got jobs at the government, went out there and fucking brainwashed them. These are just not even common criminals. As a result, once a sheep has been moved off the affected up lane, lands and receive a negative test result within 24 hours of being moved, removed, or moved, it can be released for sale. Any animal that tests positive is butchered and the farmer receives compensation equal to the animal's market value. So they can still make enough money to keep their farms open and keep the poisoning going on. It's unbelievable. The story is unbelievable. One of the questions Elwood and other affected idiot farmers want answered is whether the FSA is being overly cautious. It's being overly cautious. I should go down there and kick the fucking shit out of every one of them. Just how much risk does the meat now pose to the health of consumers? You should go down and grab every one of them and stick their fucking heads up to sheep's fucking earth. The Health Protection Agency has calculated that if someone were to eat 8 kilograms of sheep of meat, sheep meat a year, the average consumption in the UK, that contained the maximum levels of Cicia 137, as if everything else don't exist, and it would give the consumers a dose of 0 0.1 millisievers, which is how they manipulated everybody using the word millisievers. That's not what you're looking for. You're looking for fucking back quotes. Oh, and this is just one-tenth of the person's acceptable, accepted annual limit. Accepted was created right after Fukushima fucking melted down. Or Chernobyl melted down. In the UK, we are, on average, listen to this fucking bird brain dipstick, dipshit fucking version. We're exposed to natural annual doses. So they just conflated man-made with natural emitters that are harmless and innocuous and benign and everything on the planet is already acclimated to through genetic superior selection. The fucking reason we exist is because we're acclimated to it. But yet that is what they've fucking done to you every day for 75 years. When are you going to stand up? When am I going to get a break? Or when are you going to fucking help me? Such as radon gas. Like you got to be in a basement that's fucking sealed. You're not going to walk around picking up radon gas on your fucking Geiger counter and cosmic rays. Go out, point your fucking Geiger counter at the sun and tell me how many Geiger counters it jumps. And I'll show you a fucking idiot. Which in total accounts for 85% of our total radiological exposure. Now they're calling sunshine a radiological exposure. Like, every nuclear university, every nuclear academic it's nothing but a fucking piece of shit, coward, manipulative, lying, mass murdering criminal. Every fucking one of them are lunatics. They're literally lunatics. They're literally stupid, worm-like creatures. No backbones whatsoever. The recommended annual dose limit for anyone working with radiation. What? You're not going to get the same thing in sunshine all of a sudden? Is 20 millisieverts. And a thousand millisieverts or one siever is the level where radiation sickness would be expected. A fucking atom, which is nothing compared to 20 millisieverts. An atom. You can put two million on the head of a needle, sequesters in your muscles, your organs, and your bones. You can end up with all kinds of illnesses and diseases down the road and cancers decades down the road. But there's like, this is predicted out of those. Yeah, and the guy was up taking pictures of the aquarium at the beginning of the show. As if that would fucking, you would live long enough to even get in that position. We have no detailed knowledge of low-level impacts. There's nothing but detailed knowledge of that. They killed billions and billions and billions and billions of animals in every nuclear country worldwide. Decade after decade after decade. And no animal has ever been cured. No fucking human has ever been cured. No animal has ever survived. If it did, they wouldn't stop talking about it. If they did, they'd have it in the back of a fucking transport truck going around to every school on the planet. It, it cured that dog, it did. In reality, every dog died of tumors, 
bone tumors, liver tumors, lung tumors. For example, we were surprised that technetium from Sellafield has been found in seashells and seaweed, seaweed off the Norwegian coast, Norwegian coast, and has accumulated in lobsters. Technetium, like technetium 99. On a personal level, I'm not happy that the sheep meat is in the human food chain at all. So much is still unknown. No, it's known. It's 100% known. Farley is an independent consultant. Ian Farley, piece of shit. Radioactivity in the environment has advised various environmental NGOs, UK government agencies, European Parliament. He believes the FSA is not being too cautious. But wait for it. The cesium burden in the effect of meat is too high for children to eat at the moment, he says. But adults would be okay. No, because children are impacted much quicker than the adults. All the females are born with all their eggs. You can't give it to any generation or any 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 species. It destroys the the reproduction of the female population in animals and mammals and humans. It's insidious. It's fucking insidious. But children are more sensitive to the ingestion of nucleoids such as cesium. There's no published figure about what is an acceptable level. There's no published figure. 1,000 Beckwells is just a guide that was created after a nuclear fucking meltdown is now just a guide. Working out safe doses is complicated. You could be testing sheeps for decades yet. In other words, he just downplayed every facet and not only that, manipulated and lied. Brenda Howard works as a radiological ecology ecologist at Lancaster. And he comes out of the word university. They should have like a human curd peeler where you drop these fucking creatures in there. She has spent the last two decades studying the transfer of radionuclides to agricultural and wild animals. Instead of saying, stop growing fucking sheep, they're stupid, she made a living. Particularly the transfer of Saisia into Lake, uh, Lakeland sheep rather than letting these sheep farmers continue to drift into an uncertain future. So when they say Saisia, then the police should go arrest them and pull all their fucking teeth out and cut their tongues off so they never say it again. Then you're extreme. They're murdering the entire fucking planet and all 8 million species. And they're calling you scum and losers and you should be exterminated. But heavens forbid you say they should be held accountable. Heavens forbid you say there should be justice. Heavens forbid that you tell the fucking truth too. Heavens forbid you face it. I should help to curry them. And all you're doing, all the daughters, cesium, it's just the tracer that tells you all of this is there. That's what makes the story so fucking insidious. That's what makes these people so unbelievable, so, so monstrous, so spineless, so heartless, so, so emotionless, so deadly, such a threat to all species everywhere. I think it's time to reevaluate the actual dose on the plate for any consumer is going to be small in most parts. The main issue is making sure the farmers who rear the sheep are not eating lots of the contaminated meat. And ironically, Elmwood says he doesn't even like the taste of lamb prefers beef. Murder y'all so he can make a fucking dollar. People that sense for me should be fucking strung up. The FSA admits that cesium-137 will remain biologically unavailable for available for many years to come in the affected uplands. And this doesn't exist. Folks, as far as they're concerned, that doesn't exist. That you're stupid if you believe that, and that I'm stupid for showing it to you. That's how the industry survived up until now. That's how it made it all the way to here. Once Pottinger has packed up his Geiger counter and handed over a certificate, that allows shithead Elwood to sell his lambs. The farmer whistles for one of his five sheep dogs and sets off on foot to get the sheep. He says other affected farmers are unhappy about the frozen level of compensation, but are reluctant to speak out about the subject for fear of driving down the consumer's demand for the sheep meat. So they're reluctant to tell the truth because the people won't want to be poisoned. And that's 3,000 miles away from Medusa, reactor four 
a Chernobyl. See what you can't decontamination a truck by doing this. This is why you have graveyards of vehicles. This is a study that came out in Japan. Congenital heart disease operations rose 14%. Now, this was per 100,000 children. But nowhere in it do they say four, that's 14,200 children. The headline should say, congenital heart disease operations rose to 14,200 per 100,000 children after Fukushima. Because then that would get your attention. Then that would, that would actually, most people can't even work out what 14% is. Because they listen to universities that are incapable of fucking functioning in any world. And they attributed it to Chirino of Fukushima. So the people that are eating the sheep, the people that are eating the food from these radiated places are having those babies. This is, these numbers are right across Japan. That's not just Fukushima Prefecture. That's right across all of Japan. You can expect the same thing in the United States and Canada because we're across from them just like UK was from Chernobyl. So when you do the math, it's actually 14,200. And after the 1986 nuclear accident in Chernobyl, Ukraine, there was a similar rise in congenital heart diseases in neighboring countries, the researchers said in background notes. In neighboring countries after Chernobyl. Everybody, it wasn't just the pilots that died. Everybody on the helicopter also died too. 600 pilots, but there's usually three or four people on these big helicopters. So multiply it, say at least 24 helicopter personnel died. Chernobyl. These suits can't protect you from gamma shine, the x-rays, the neutrons, and the pulsing of the isotopes. It's, and these are farm fields. That's the most scariest thing. Why are you even checking? Just run away and leave it. Well, because they'll still pollinate and they'll still drift all over the world. Mutated this, mutated that. It's uh, unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And stuff like this really sets me off the deep edge. And that's why I push so hard and for so many years now to, to become a source of information. Today is not one of my prime examples. Today I'm, I'm cranky because I got I to gotta make incredible harsh decisions because we got to have a studio. And I don't know how to fucking do it unless people help me. Links are at the bottom of the description and under each of these videos where you can donate. Chernobyl's disastrous cover-up is a warning for the Next nuclear age. So what they're suggesting is these hot spots. 48 hours after the accident, an assistant handed him a roughly drawn map on it. An arrow shot northeast from the nuclear power plant in Chernobyl and broadened to become a river of air 10 miles wide that was surging across Belarus towards Russia. And in the slow-moving mass of radioactive clouds reached Moscow, where a spring storm front was piling up, millions could be harmed. Millions could be harmed. Harmed. You're not harmed. You get, you die later from it. So this is what makes nuclear so insidious, is that they allowed people, they refused to acknowledge that it was deadly and they gave them paper mask. You know how many nuclear scientists and academics and students ran to help Chernobyl when it melted down? Not a fucking one. Your nuclear student is like literally the stupidest thing we'll ever create on this planet because their future is wrecking all 8 million species so they can pretend that they're special to themselves and to their telephones. So that day in Moscow airport, technicians loaded artillery shells with silver iodine. Iodate. Soviet Air Force pilots climbed into the cockpits of the bombers and made the one-hour flight to Chernobyl where the reactors burned. The pilots circled following the weather. They flew 30, 70, 100, 200 kilometers 
chasing the inky black billows of radioactive waste as if it was just a single plume that came out. The plume never stopped coming out. And when they caught up with the cloud, they shot jets of silver into the emaciated, emaciated, in the, I can't even pronounce that one today, the rain. In the sleepy town of southern Belarus, the villagers looked up to see planes with strange yellow and gray contrails snaked across the sky. Next day, 27th of April, powerful winds kicked up. Clouds billowed on the horizon and rain poured down in the deluge. The raindrops, raindrops scavenged, scavenged radioactive dust floating 200 meters in the air. Now think about that statement. All these statements are meant to condense and make you think it's just this plume. It's only so big. It's only so wet. And sent it to the ground. The pilots trailed the slow-moving gaseous bulk of the nuclear waste northeast beyond blah, blah, blah. Wherever the pilots shot silver rain fill. So they were chemtrailing the sky along with a toxic brew of deadly radioactive elements that I showed you earlier was just a tiny fraction of them. If Operation Cyclone had not been top secret, the headlines would have been spectacular. Scientists using advanced technology saved Russian cities from technological disaster. Disaster. Yet as the old saying goes, what comes up? must come down, and no one told the Belarusians that the southern half of the republic has been sacrificed to protect the Russian cities. In the path of the artificially induced rain lived several hundred thousand Belarusians ignorant of the contamination headed towards them. And they're not ignorant no more because there's orphanages still there today being filled up of disfigured and deformed children with no one to love them and are abandoned and put into cruel environments where there's no one to help them. You can't get the money because that would make it public. You can get all the money you want for South Carolina's nuclear power plant, $9 billion. You can't get money for the victims. It just shows an unbelievable failure. When the incident at Chernobyl took place, three men sacrificed themselves by diving into the contaminated water and draining the valve from the reactor, which contained radioactive material. Had the valve not been drained, it would have most likely spread across most parts of Europe. So in other words, what they're claiming, claiming is that three people sacrificed themselves and therefore it wasn't a fucking issue. I'll tell you a crazy story. Yeah, three people, they dove down there to pull the valve, pull the plug. Thank goodness they were heralds. Does that look like three people? You think it's those three people on the fucking roof are okay? That's the nuclear industry. Same ones who photoshopped somebody taking pictures of a reactor core, melted core. The lunatic nuclear industry doesn't do this for something to do. They don't do it because they don't know better. They do it so you can't fucking know. Nuclear is nothing but a plague. One hundred. Everybody in it is nothing but a plague. They're truly nothing but a plague. They're spineless. In believing that the Chernobyl zone safely contained the accident, we fall for the proximity trap, which holds that the closer a person is to the nuclear explosion, the more radioactivity they are exposed to. But radioactive gases follow weather patterns moving around the globe to leave shadows of contamination allegedly in certain shapes. It's always meant to downplay it. Every facet of this is meant to downplay it. England, for example, enjoyed clear weather for several days after Chernobyl, but rain started May the second and fell heavily. We just talked about that story, by the way. On the uneven upland terrain, radioactive fallout pooled. The needles on the radiation detectors at Sellafield, formerly Windscale, they changed the name to Sellafield because they were kidnapping people at the theaters and everywhere else to go into the nuclear meltdown. That's why it's called Sellafield today, because they changed the name. They were not ashamed of what they were doing. They were trying to hide it. Windscale, the nuclear reprocessing, mixed oxide reprocessing plant, went upwards, alarming 200 times higher than natural radioactive fallout. From five becquels a square meter, radiation levels in topsoil spiked to 4,000 becquels a square meter. Kenneth Baker, the then environmental secretary, issued assurances that the radioactivity isotopes would soon be washed away by the rain. 
That's how insidious the nuclear industry is. Oh, yeah, no, the rain's going to wash it away. You don't have to worry about nothing. Everything will be good in a couple of days. Like it's this fucking snowstorm or something. But got his pension and retired. Kenneth Baker, environmental secretary, should have been put on that fucking helicopter so that the world... This was protests in Ukraine after, by the way. Two months later, however, levels, two months later, levels rose yet higher from 4,000 to 10,000 beckles a square meter, then to 20,000 southwest Scotland, 4,000 times higher than the normal radioactive fallout from bomb testing. Scientists tested sheep and found their levels were 1,000 beckles a kilogram. So they said, fuck it, 1,000 beckles is the limit. And so this one, they say restrictions for meat from 7,000 farms. The other one is 9,000 farms. The early predictions of CCM being washed away from the upland soils prove optimistic. No, there was outright, outrageous, blatant fucking lie. Why have a journalist if you're not going to be honest? Why bother? You went to get the degree so you can be a fucking monster because you're a coward to pick up the knife yourself. The mineral-starved native plants efficiently drank up radioactive isotopes. Tiny micro fungi moved cesium-137. See, once again, you're hearing this connotation that cesium is the only isotope you're supposed to fucking worry about. From the roots to the plant tips were grazing sheep fed. Researchers added months, then years to the predictions of how long the radioactive cesium would linger in the environment. Eventually, restrictions remained in place for 334 farmers of North Wales for 26 fucking years, 3,000 miles away. Do you think that was the only fucking spot out there that got radiated, that where they shouldn't have grown food? No, you shouldn't have grown food anywhere in the UK. It does show you how idiotic it is that it's nuclear still alive after this. It does show you how many people in well-positioned places are willing to stab everyone in the fucking back so they can pretend that they're not, that they're okay or that they can get a... It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Yeah, we don't allow links in our description, even though at some point I might in the future, we don't allow links in the description because people, the industry will put links in there and when you go to that site, they're going to steal your IP address and then they're going to use that to censor you because you dare speak out and because then they were able to capture your information. I'm not saying the people that are putting the links there are doing that. I'm just saying I have to worry about that. I have to worry about the handful of people that come here to try to protect them. And I provide so much information, there's no reason to put any links in my fucking videos. I provide nothing but an endless stream of fucking links. There's no link you're going to put in my video that is any, even meets the qualifications of what I put in there. As researchers monitored, a chir researchers, another word for fucking monsters, monitor Chernobyl radioactivity made a troubling discovery, only half to cease you. What about the fucking uranium, curium, plutonium, americium, neptunium, strontium, and everything else? You pieces of shit. Only half of the cesium-137 they detected came from Chernobyl. So now they're going to downplay it. The rest has already been in Colombian soils, deposited there during the years of nuclear testing. And after the 1957 fire wind scale, plutonium, which should never have existed, they done that because it can't have a repository. So rather than try to store it, they burn it and release it into the environment. The same winds and rains that brought down Chernobyl fallout have been at work quietly distributing radioactive contaminants across northern England and Scotland for decades. No. Bomb testing is totally different than a nuclear meltdown. A nuclear meltdown, testing, a bomb goes off one millionth of a second. A meltdown is constantly releasing, it's, it's like endless nuclear bombs forever and ever and ever, nuclear bombs going off. The volume, 
They say fire from bomb tests carried out during the Cold War scattered the volume of radioactive gases that dwarfs in Chernobyl. That's not true. That's not even close to being true. 2,000 bombs can't even come close to a nuclear meltdown. It's ludicrous to suggest it. But that's what we're talking. We're talking about the idiot machine itself. Chernobyl explosion issued 45 million curries of radioactive iodine, which is around 1,200 pounds of radioactive iodine into the atmosphere. The iodine is created from the meltdown. It's endless. It continues to come out. It's a meltdown. Emissions from Soviet U.S. bomb tests amounted to 20 billion curries of iodine, 500 times more. Iodine is not the only thing. Uh, 131 is not the only thing you got to worry about. Like to have to have a conversation, you got to have the conversation. You can't keep just using the exact same lies everywhere I go. I hear the same word: iodine, cesium, iodine, cesium. But the biggest byproduct of the nuclear is curium and all its daughters, and iodine, it has many daughters. Xenon, many, many daughters. Do you get it? Krypton. Like, we got to have the conversation. We got to have someone like me out there. I'm just crazy to even try, I guess. I'm a nut job to even think that someone like me can exist. I'm a lunatic for considering trying. Radioactive iodine a short-lived, powerful isotope can cause thyroid diseases, thyroid cancers, hormonal imbalances, problem with the GI tract, and autoimmune disorders. Radioactive iodine. But I, radioactive iodine is not the ones we're worried about. I'm fucking worried about neptunium and all the daughters of cesium, and all the daughters of americium, plutonium, and uranium, which is what the reactors run on. And I'm deadly worried about the curium. An engineer dating as, as engineers, that's, a, that's another, that's a code word for monsters, detonated over 2,000 nuclear bombs into the atmosphere, which is fuck all. That's fuck all compared to a nuclear meltdown. Scientists lost track, never even tried, of where the radioactive isotopes fell and where they came from. But they caught glimpses of how readily radioactivity traveled the globe. In the 1950s, British officials detected harmful levels a radioactive cesium imported Minnesota wheat, Minnesota, which is 2,500 kilometers away from Nevada, where the testing was alleged to have occurred. Yeah, no, the whole, the whole, they built this to signify the victims. They should have built helicopter pilots because there was over 600 of them, around 2,400 of the crew that died. Everybody died in those helicopters, not just the pilots. But over the years, scientists failed to come to an agreement with the global... Scientists failed to come to an agreement. Distribution of radioactivity in the food chain did to the human health. No, they killed fucking billions and billions of monkeys and creatures in every country worldwide for decades and decades and decades. Nothing's ever survived it. But they're, they're always in disagreement. That's how you say... we. They won't answer the question. When the Chernobyl accident occurred, experts in radiation medicine, as is there such thing as radiation medicine, call for long-term studies on the Chernobyl people. The study never occurred. There's no such thing as radiation medicine. It's ludicrous to suggest radiation can fucking help somebody when it kills all the animals. You take your loved ones to the hospital, you're a fucking... Sucked into this mass murder machine. 2% of chemo patients with radiation survives longer with it than they would have without it. And without it, they survive a lot longer and they're a lot more healthier. They don't lose all their fucking hair, which means you killed all the cells in your body. Now, the, industry's, the, in, the industry has to go. It fucking has to go. There's no maybes, no middle ground on this. There's no perhaps. That industry has to go. They're a direct threat to every species. If you can't work it out, you're not fucking trying. Fortunately, Chernobyl health records are now available to the public. And show that the people living in the radioactive traces, traces, fell ill from cancers and respiratory illnesses, anemia, autoimmune disorders, which is heart, lung, liver, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline, there's Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, diabetes, 
fertility problems, birth defects, two or three times more frequently in the years after the accident than before it. And most of the illnesses and diseases and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries won't show up for many, many years later. In highly contaminated Belarusian, Belarusian town of Viprin, just six of the 70 children in 1990 were characterized as healthy. Just six out of 70. But see, that six would have got six later. Sick later. The rest had one chronic disease or another. On average, the children had in their bodies 8,500 beckles a kilogram. Per kilogram. Child doesn't weigh a kilogram, in case you're not aware. Of radioactive cesium. 20 beckles a kilogram is considered safe by idiots and monsters and mass murderers and villains and goblins and demons and fucking weirdos from the nuclear industry and the nuclear university. Your nuclear university is not about a shit storm of idiots. Nuclear university produces the worst people on the planet, the most cowardly ones too. None of them went to Fukushima. For decades, idiots have puzzled over strange clusters of thyroid cancers, leukemias, and birth defects among the people living in Crumbia, which, like southern Belarus, is an overlooked hot spot of radioactivity from the Cold War, decades of nuclear bomb production, and nuclear power accidents. I'm so fucking enraged, I can barely contain myself today. I apologize for caring and for giving a fuck and for trying. Currently, policymakers are advocating a massive expansion of nuclear power as a way to combat climate change. Yeah, and, and it, that is ludicrous to even suggest that climate change can be mitigated by a mass murder machine, by a genocide machine, an ecocide machine. Before we enter a new nuclear age, declassified Chernobyl health, declassified. What the fuck did you classify it? Chernobyl health records raise questions about any university being fucking lucid that have been left unanswered with the impacts of the chronic low doses of radioactivity on human health. What we do know is that as follow from bomb tests drifted down mostly in the northern hemisphere, thyroid cancers grew exponentially. In Europe and North America, childhood leukemias, which used to be medical rarity, increased in incidence year by year after 1950. In other words, it was unheard of pre-1950. Now fucking every street got children dying of cancer. Australia hit, and cancer is the last one to show up. Australia hit by the follow from Britain and French test had one of the highest incidence rates of childhood cancer worldwide. And right now, the Australian Mineral Association is trying to overturn the ban on nuclear power. There, the whole industry is nothing but fucking spineless, spineless, spineless cowards. Unbelievable cowards. Unimaginable cowards. Just inconceivable cowards. An analyst of 43,000 men in North America, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, showed the sperm counts dropped 52% from 1973 to 2011. That's going to be the true in the animal kingdom. In the insect kingdom, kingdom, the marine world, the mammals. It's not just humans. What we're doing, we're, we're cutting edge. We are, we are the very cutting edge of resistance. We fill you with facts we, and some passion. Today's been a little bit plus on it. <laughs> But because you got to understand, when I'm putting all this together, it can make you fucking nutty. And when you're censored as heavy as I am, that'll make you even nuttier. When you're desperately trying to do the moral and ethical thing and you're up against nothing but incredible, de deceitful, dishonest, little fucking pinheads from university, cowards from university, monsters. Like, you've seen the, the crazy calls I got this week. I've, and they act like like there's... They're, um, like you can't have a conversation. These people got lethal doses. They were up there 15 to 20 seconds and then they ran away. That's the last, it, that's all they worked was 15, 20 seconds. 
It's not, they, they weren't okay. They weren't healthy after. It wasn't safe to do that. No, no, no. Nuclear students were nowhere to be found. Nuclear academics were nowhere to be found. So they had to send them the victims of society that they jacked off the streets. Statistics show a correlation between radioactive contaminants and health problems that are similar to those that materialized in the Chernobyl contaminated territories. The correlation does not prove a casual link, but the statistics do. However, invite a lot of questions. Questions that scientists stakeholders should tackle before we enter a second nuclear renaissance. Because there's this parade of idiots out there saying that it's harmless. And they ran away and abandoned these perfectly good places because they had irradiated it so much. They made these, these lead vests so people can go and work for 15 seconds because otherwise they would die immediately. To pretend that there's footage of the reactor core is ludicrous. Like Miko Kaku has said, it's gone straight down into the earth and it's still going. This is why they built a sarcophagus type structure over the place. Not that that will work. This is why they abandoned everything. It's because it's not, it's not what the lawyers like this piece of shit here is claiming. He works for Forbes. He's not a nuclear academic. He's not a nuclear scientist. I'm not even close to it. But yet he's, He's put on a pedestal. He's put on a stage. He shows up in many different countries. He, he writes for Forbes. Nuclear industry must act to end the decade-long demonetization of the most environmental friendly form of energy and the world's only viable hope against climate change and now poverty. We've never heard him say that one before. This was the message of Michael Schellenberger the president of research and policy organizations, environmental progress. What the fuck? Whose whole job is to promote nuclear because he can make, he's making a living by promoting it. He makes a living. He pays the bills. He flies all over the world. He's had endless money thrown him. He's put on a pedestal. People pay to come and listen to him. But all he does is, and we've covered this piece of shit, coward scum over and over and over. He's 100%, uh, to address the urgent poverty in climate change. Urgent poverty. He says nobody got hurt. Nobody would get hurt. Nobody could die. International Panel on Climate Change. Nuclear, nuclear actually produces one quarter of the emission of a solar farm. One quarter of the emission of a solar farm. You really think that's one quarter of the emission of a solar farm? That's full of isotopes that they're pumping up out of these chimneys. They got them up and high in the air so the workers don't die. They picked up 30 million one-ton bags, 30 million one-ton bags, just from a nuclear power plant, which is only 3%. You can't even go visit the graveyards anymore. Fear of nuclear power because the accidents at Fukushima, Chernobyl, Three Mile Island is baseless, Schellenberg says. Baseless. That's why he ran away and left everything, because you're fucking so much better than them. Because you're so better than them. It's baseless. No one, like it's, I'm not going to read that article because it's so disgusting, so despicable, and so deceptive. I desperately, desperately want to do something good because there's so much evil. I can't even wrap my fucking mind around it. I've done it. I'm not going to succeed in everything I try. Who, who does, right? I succeed in almost most of them, though, because I got no options. I don't know what to do. Only just to keep doing what I'm doing. That makes sense. That's why we built this whole operation, yeah? That's why we created this whole thing. That's why I produced well over a thousand of these. Most of them are lucid, but over a thousand of these presentations. And if anybody thinks that's easy, then you've got another thing coming to you. Anything's working with all the equipment that I work with is somehow simple and you can do it in just a week or two of your nuts. Every piece of equipment takes me fucking weeks or months to figure out. To get it to work synergistically with all the other equipment. Do I ever give up? Do I ever slow down? Do I ever... Like, the only thing that causes me grief is I can't raise 
the money necessary to do the things I got to get done. That frightens the shit out of me and that I'm censored heavily and that people are willing to do that to me. Hi, everybody. My subscribers never grow. My views never grow. My live streams always grow backwards. No matter what, no matter how good the presentation, the better the presentation, the less views I'll get. The better the presentations, the less subscribers I'll get. The more work I do, the less people will donate. It's just not right. I got no choice. If I don't fucking raise the money, how do I do anything? If I don't push to raise it, how do we get to this point? Just for me, it's hopeless because I try to work so hard. And when I got a really good plan, I can never implement it. It takes forever to bring it to any fruition anyway. And that doesn't discourage me, but something's got to get done. And so the money I raised this week, I got to spend at the end of the month on fucking bills for this. It's nutty. It's just so nutty. How the hell am I ever going to get ahead? We got to go to the East Coast. Is what we got to do and get a studio, or we got to get a studio here. To get a studio here, you're going to have to raise $1,000 a month plus. And I'm stuck on the West Coast breeding in Fukushima every day. So Central Canada or the East Coast of Canada? Central Canada is stupid. That's not going to work. You need fucking half a million dollars to get a studio there. The East Coast, we can get a studio. I just got to get there. I don't know. What, what am I supposed to do? If people don't help me. Just saying. Like, if you got two homes, sell one. If you're getting up there in years and you don't, there's no way you can spend the money you got, it's time to help me. If you're in a position to influence people to help me, influence those people to help me. I'm not asking for the moon. I'm not. I'm asking for a 9,000 to raise to safely get me there and get me into a spot. Because we burn every nickel I got on this doing what I'm doing. And I got no choice. I have to continue to do what I'm doing. I can't give it up. I can't go away. I can't pretend it's not happening. It has to be done. Just like today's story has to be told. There's nobody on the planet is going to come out and articulate it and shift through all the lies and misinformation and bring it to you the way I do all the time. I get why, because it's such a crazy, crazy... And yeah, and that's a fake picture behind me. It's ludicrous. Leaks are at the bottom of the video. I know, Elaine. Thank you, Elaine. Which is your moderator, Shanikins775. Yeah, I, I'm just pushing because I understand I better push. We're, we're at a crossroad right now. It's good versus evil. And then I have to be careful of every step I make so I don't waste a nickel. So I'm tortured. I got years and years, so over six straight years of just constantly terrified of how do I spend a little bit that I got. What should I get done? What's the most important part? How do we get this accomplished? How do we do expeditions? How do we make it to Alaska and come back? How do we raise the money? I'm not even fucking healthy. And yet, here I am again today. Proud to get the opportunity. Privileged. And when I tell these stories, it's usually a big relief for me each day. Today is not one of those days for me. I, I understand I got to raise the money and I don't know how to do it. 
I think that's above and beyond what I, I can do. Some of the marine gear and the sailboat and other stuff I can get rid of. I'm not going to get much money for it, but I need at least another 9,000. I'm on top we raised. And then we're going to have to burn that, so I need another 10,000. And the sooner I can do it, the sooner I can just shift gear and go and set up and back in business permanently in a studio where we don't have any of the worries I got now and where it's going to get better every day for me. That's the solution. And I just, I need people to really take that chance. I need people to really make an effort to put me in a position where I can pull off a studio. Because I can't keep doing what I'm doing. Trust me, it can't, it's not sustainable for much longer. We're going to have to come up with a way forward. The only way forward is for enough people to donate that I don't have this misery machine on my back all the time. God bless everyone. Hugs for everybody. Thank you, everybody. We'll see everybody Monday, the 29th, 2019, in a couple of days. I'll try to get some rest of the weekend. We got lots to do. We'll see everybody then. God bless.